Hi, PerspectiveWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Monday morning, August 24th. We're dealing with two different tropical systems right now. Marco weakened in the overnight hours, back down to tropical storm status due to some decent wind shear in its vicinity. There is very little chance, if any, of Marco intensifying over the next few hours. Its main area of convection is off to the north and east of the low-level circulation center and the displacement of the two is uh, a result of the wind shear and that wind shear will not go away uh, anytime soon so its days are really numbered it will produce some heavy rainfall uh, especially across the panhandle region of florida the southern part of mississippi over the next few hours but it will actually tend to dissipate over the next couple of days meanwhile tropical storm Laura, we'll see that in a moment, is uh, now moving along the southern part of Cuba. A part of it is out over the open water south of Cuba, and part of it is interacting with the island of Cuba, but it will spill out over into the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico by early tomorrow, likely intensify into a hurricane uh, status as it moves over the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, and it could very well uh, make landfall sometime Wednesday night or Thursday as a hurricane probably around the border region of Texas and Louisiana. Definitely Laura is the bigger threat to be concerned with in the Gulf Coastal region. Here's the very latest satellite imagery view of Tropical Storm Marco. Notice right here there's a little circulation center that can be, can be seen on the satellite imagery right in this region right here and this is displaced from the main area of convection or thunderstorm activity that's kind of uh, off to the north and east of the circulation center again which is right in this region this is a symptom of wind shear and we'll talk about the reason why in a moment here and it has to do with the upper level pattern of an upper level trough to the west and an upper level ridge to the east causing some southerly or southwesterly wind shear in the vicinity and that's all good news it weakened the system overnight and again there's very little if any chance of it intensifying now as it's approaching the central gulf coastal region again this is the florida panhandle certainly some heavy rainfall for parts of the central gulf, gulf coast but the weakening uh, certainly uh, prevents any kind of a serious blow to that uh, part of the u.s and before we take a look at Tropical Storm Laura, let me just show the upper level map right now for Monday morning. This morning, 500 millibars. And this is what I'm talking about here. We have this upper level feature, kind of an upper level low, uh, uh, sitting at 500 millibar level to the west. This is a reflection of Tropical Storm Marco at the surface as it currently stands. And meanwhile, off to the east, we have a strong ridge of high pressure. So the, combination of clockwise flow around that ridge and a counterclockwise flow around that upper level trough is causing some southerly winds or southwesterly winds at the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere and that is uh, causing the displacement of the low level circulation center with its main convection field and in other words it has gone, undergone weakening as a result of that shear in the vicinity and that is not going to go anywhere uh, over the next few hours so there's very little if any chance of Marco intensifying and in fact this whole system will actually tend to dissipate over the next few days it'll kind of drift off to the west and by uh, midweek it probably will uh, dissipate to an unnamed system there will, be, will certainly be some moisture left behind but again all good news on Marco as we begin the day on Monday. Meanwhile, let's take a look at Laura and talk about what is certainly the uh, bigger threat, the bigger area of concern right now is uh, Tropical Storm Laura. This is the island of Cuba right here. Now we're looking at satellite imagery in uh, an IR uh, channel here. So it, it really shows quite well where the tallest clouds are, the coldest clouds, the strongest thunderstorms. Notice a lot of this activity is south of Cuba, out over the open waters. Part of it is certainly interacting with the island of uh, Cuba, and Laura interacted with Hispaniola yesterday, 
and survived that uh, interaction quite well. Both of these islands have some rugged terrain that tend to disrupt the circulation center and uh, often weaken considerably tropical systems as they passed over as they pass over Dominican Republic, Haiti, and then Cuba. In this particular case, Laura has held its own, and that is really an ominous sign. Once it gets out over the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico, it's liable to intensify quite rapidly. I believe it will become a hurricane. Again, currently tropical storm status south of Cuba, but by early tomorrow, it'll spill out over into the Gulf of Mexico. And we've talked about this for the past several days. Very, very warm waters in the Gulf of Mexico. Some of the warmest water anywhere around the world right now. And again, it looks like it may be headed on a path towards the Texas-Louisiana border by, let's say, Wednesday night or Thursday, and possibly, very possibly, as a hurricane again. Much of it is south of Cuba right now. It has survived quite well its encounter with uh, Hispaniola and now Cuba, and that, again, is an ominous sign for the uh, uh, central and western part of the Gulf Coast for the middle and latter part of this week. And here's the official positioning right now of the National Hurricane Center of both tropical storms. Marco right here, and again, it has undergone weakening in the overnight hours, should not intensify today as it continues to battle with some wind shear. Lara, meanwhile, just south of Cuba, this is the island of Hispaniola, Dominican Republic, and Haiti has some rugged terrain, but it survived its, in, its battle with that island and now is battling Cuba. But again, by early tomorrow, it should spill out over into the Gulf of Mexico. And once in this region right here, it will begin an intensification process that very likely to bring it, back, bring it to hurricane status perhaps moving towards the Texas-Louisiana uh, border region by uh, Wednesday night or Thursday, and again, very possibly as a hurricane before, uh, before and when it makes landfall later this week. Well, before we take a look at last night's GFS model run, I wanted to show this uh, interesting um, loop here that I found on uh, Twitter from weathernerds.org shows the ensemble run of the European uh, in terms of the movement of both of these systems. And we see multiple tracks here. An ensemble run of a computer forecast model is uh, when they tweak the initial conditions slightly in numerous ways. In some cases, they can make it a little bit more humid, a little bit drier, a little bit warmer, a little bit uh, cooler. And there's multiple, do a couple dozen ensemble runs in a given model. This is the ensemble run of the European model and what we're seeing here are the the, uh, the variation of the tracks amongst the ensemble runs and a couple things I want to point out. First of all, the initial one is Marco. That tends to just dissipate over the next couple of days. It has encountered some wind shear and then Laura moves from south of Cuba right here into the Gulf of Mexico, likely right near the uh, Texas-Louisiana border region, but there is a fair amount of spread, so all residents from uh, anywhere along the Texas-Louisiana coastline have to be on guard for Laura, because notice that wide spread here as we get out 48 hours, 72 hours or so. Then it is liable to turn to the north and east and spill out uh, over the south central U.S. and perhaps cause some heavy rain as far as the Mid-Atlantic region uh, goes uh, by the early part of the weekend. So that, that is uh, certainly on the table here that this has, uh, Laura has an impact inland once it moves uh, uh, to the uh, central or western Gulf of Mexico and it's allowed to go in south central U.S. and then end up over the Mid-Atlantic region by the upcoming weekend. But again, Laura is the bigger threat here. There's kind of a wide variation of uh, possible areas of landfall here sometime Wednesday night or Thursday. So the bottom line is all residents from Texas, Louisiana, throughout the entire part of the Texas and Louisiana southern border region, be on guard for Laura for the Wednesday night, Thursday, uh, potential landfall as a hurricane.
Well, let's now take a look at the 06Z run of the GFS model. We saw this uh, particular forecast map a moment ago. It's at 500 millibars as of this morning, uh, early Monday morning. Again, the uh, main story here is that we have a high pressure ridge over the uh, southwestern Atlantic, a little upper level trough which is playing a key role right now in the weakening of Marco. In between these two systems, a south or southwesterly flow, mid and upper parts of the atmosphere causing enough wind shear to weaken Marco overnight and there's no chance of it strengthening over the next few hours. And in fact, it'll just tend to drift to the west over the next couple of days and dissipate. Now, one of the interesting forecast challenges for these two systems is how will Marco, uh, uh, what will Marco do to the environment uh, for Lara? And there are a couple of possible effects of Marco on the ultimate uh, st uh, storm track and intensity of Lara. First of all, will it cause some upwelling over the Gulf of Mexico and, and therefore cause some of that warmer water to be displaced by some colder air, a uh, colder water from underneath? That is not likely, unfortunately, that is not likely to be the case because of its weak nature right here. Um, and, and another thing is it tends to, it kind of looks like this system will tend to kind of clear out the wind shear out of the uh, Gulf of Mexico region, paving the way for intensification of Lara. So really, there's good news and bad news with what has happened in the overnight hours. The weakening of Marco is certainly good news, but it actually may set the stage for uh, Lara to intensify, maybe even to stronger levels than if Marco held its own uh, as, a, as a hurricane, for example. Now let's move forward here and we'll see what happens as this upper level feature tends to move to the south and west. Again, that'll tend to tend to weaken the wind shear here. They're still on, on the forecast map here as of Tuesday morning, but it's not quite as evident that there will be wind shear like there is right now. And here comes Laura. And this again is a 500 millibar height anomaly forecast map. This is Tuesday morning, and it just heads towards the Texas Louisiana border region. But as we saw a moment ago, everybody from Brownsville all the way to New Orleans should be uh, stay on guard for this. Potential hurricane hit come Wednesday night or Thursday because there's a little bit of a spread here into uh, as to exactly where it may end up. Then beyond that, goes into the south central U.S., brings some heavy rain, no doubt, to that part of the nation, and eventually swings on back to the to the east, and it could produce some heavy rainfall in the Mid Atlantic region during the upcoming weekend. Well, let's now take a look at the surface forecast maps from the 060 operational run of the GFS. Here's Marco, and here's Lara here. Let's move forward here. Again, this system here has encountered so much wind shear, it tends to just fall apart over the next 48 to 72 hours or so. There'll be a little bit of moisture left behind, but the main story here, the main threat is Lara. And once it bypasses Cuba, enters out over the very warm waters, of the Gulf of Mexico, it will probably encounter a more favorable environment with less wind shear than what is uh, uh, Marco is dealing with right now. And hence, I do expect this will uh, reach hurricane status, maybe even greater than hurricane category one, maybe category two or three, as it approaches, likely approaches the border region of Texas, Louisiana. But again, all residents from Brownsville all the way to New Orleans stay on guard for this particular system. Notice here it's intensifying here as it approaches land. That is not good news either. 968 millibars here Tuesday night. By the time we get into Wednesday, notice 953 millibars. So again, it looks like it, it'll intensify as it's starting to approach land and likely landfall here now down to 950 millibars. 9.55 uh, right around landfall time here as of late Wednesday night, early Thursday. And after that, again, it turns up to the north and ultimately to the east, causing some heavy rainfall in the south central U.S. And it will likely cause some heavy rainfall in the mid-Atlantic region early in the upcoming weekend. So a lot going on. Stay tuned to PerspectiveWeather.com for uh, updates later today. The good news is Marco has weakened. 
shows no signs of strengthening. Bad news is uh, this kind of paves the way for in intensification for Tropical Storm Laura, very likely to become a hurricane as it crosses over those warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico on its way towards Texas, Louisiana, Wednesday night, Thursday time frame. That's it for now. For PerspectiveWeather.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Doria.